<laughs> what is up guys what a freaking ride if you guys follow me on instagram you saw all the madness i ended up driving up to tulsa the same day jumping in the 4 p.m ladies circuit ring event 250 dollars buy-in and your girl well guys this just happened <laughs> let's go did it i binked it first place for almost 5k and of course the world series of poker circuit ring got one got one under my belt and we're gonna have hopefully many more to come then two days later i end up making the 1700 dollar main event wsopc circuit final table where i got seventh place for twenty thousand six hundred and five dollars the next day i wake up to find out i was the number two trending poker player on hendon mob and it was such a whirlwind i'm honestly still soaking it all in and taking it all in what an amazing crazy adventure that week was and honestly when i was at that final table and playing heads up for the circuit ring we battled for three hours and the whole time i saw the ring sitting there and i wanted to do it so bad for myself of course but also really wanted to pull through for you guys you guys have been non-stop support since day one thank you guys so freaking much so anyway i ended up getting the job done the last hand we played was ace king versus pocket fours and as you can see i was so relieved i honestly couldn't really believe it at first but it's gonna take a while to sink in and really soak up everything that happened that week but thanks for all the support and if you guys don't want to miss all the live action make sure you follow me on instagram at pokerface underscore ash this is my first ever poker trip to Florida and no better way to start it than heading to Best Bet Jacksonville in Jacksonville, Florida. When you walk into this poker room, you can totally tell it is a poker player's poker room. Tons and tons of cash game tables, action going all the time, and I was here for the Run Good Poker series. I played in the six max and the main event. Sadly, they did not go my way, but it was time to jump in the 2-5 live stream. We're gonna be in for the max, which is 1500. I was so excited to play on this stream with some of my friends and a female I've looked up to in the poker world for a very long time. It was so fun to play with my friend, Jamie Kersetter. All right, let's Let's get into this and play some hands. Live stream is about to start. In the very first hand I get involved in, it is 3-5 with a $10 straddle, and I look down at pocket jacks and the hijack, and I raise to $30. Joey calls on the button, and the straddler comes along, so we are going three ways to a flop. The flop is king 9-7 with two diamonds. The straddler checks it over to me, and I have pocket jacks, which is middle pair on this board. We're gonna be ahead of both calling ranges a decent amount of the time. We wanna thin the field, get this heads up, and we'll most likely get called by king x and flush draws and of course some nine and seven x hands, so I bet $30. Joey makes the call, the straddler folds, now we go heads up to a turn card. The turn is the deuce of hearts, it's an absolute brick. I check it over to Joey. I wanna keep this pot manageable. I am out of position and we can always check call a bet. So I check and then Joey quickly checks behind. So we are headed to a river card, which is the nine of spades. By the river, my hand is likely good a decent amount of the time. I check and then Joey puts out about a 75% pot bet of $100. Joey and I have played a ton of hands against each other. I know his game pretty well as he knows my game fairly well as well. Against most players, I'd probably flick in the call here and be beat by some king x some portion of the time and maybe a nine. I have played a lot of hands against Joey and he very, very rarely bluffs. That's not to say he's not capable of it because he certainly is. He is a thinking player. Also a part of Joey's game that I've recognized is he will check back top pair type hands on the turn to try and extract value on the river. While most people would wanna protect their hand and get value for top pair, Joey is capable of checking that back, so it's not unlikely he could still have some king x in his range after checking the turn. There are some straight draws that missed and flush draws. I think in a vacuum, I should be flicking in a call here a huge percentage of the time. However, against Joey in this particular spot, I didn't think he was likely to be bluffing all that often given the player type I perceived him to be. So unfortunately, I do let the best hand go. It's a little painful to watch. I wish I would have just flicked in the call, but that happens sometimes in poker and playing against players you have history with, there is some leveling and meta involved, but nice bet, Joey. I'll let you take this one down and I'll get you in another hand. 
In this hand, Joey and I battle in round two as I raise under the gun two ace jack offsuit to $40 over a $10 straddle. Joey calls in the cutoff with jack 10 offsuit. We go heads up to a flop of ace, deuce, nine, rainbow. This is one of the driest boards we could possibly see. If this board was king nine deuce rainbow, for example, we'd put in a small down bet. However, on ace high board, we can mix between betting small and checking. By checking, we keep all of Joey's worst hands in. As with our exact hand, we are either way ahead or way behind. And as you can see, we are way ahead. So it gives some Joey room to start bluffing. We can also mix between betting our strongest ace x hands and checking some of our weak ones. That way we're more balanced. But Joey doesn't take the bait as he checks behind. So we head to a turn card, which is a seven of hearts. Now there are some draws out there. Joey's gonna have picked up some equity on this turn card some of the time. So now we're not gonna put in a small bet. We're gonna go with about half pot. I bet $50. Joey flashes his cards and then tosses them into the muck. So we get a little bit back on this one. In this hand, there's not a ton to talk about, but Jamie raises over a $10 straddle from under the gun one to $35. I'm next to act and look down at the beautiful ace queen of clubs. I'm gonna raise this one up to try and isolate and get value for our hand. I don't have to raise too big being in position, so I raise to $90. Sadly, Jamie makes a good fold, but we do pick up the blinds, the straddle, and her raise and take it down. In this hand, Chris puts on the $10 button straddle so the action starts in the small blind. It folds over to me and I'm under the gun one and look down at King Jack offsuit. Given the table dynamics, things weren't getting too out of line. I think it's fine to open this, so I raise to $35. It folds all the way around to Chris, who is playing a little bit loose, splashy, but he is a very, very competent and good player. He makes the call, so we're gonna go heads up to a flop of Jack 8 7 with two hearts. On this board texture, being out of position, I should, in theory, be checking my entire range. However, we have a decent hand. It does need some protection. We are out of position, but I think Chris is going to be calling a very wide range on this board, so I did lean towards betting, although in a vacuum, this hand should just be checking. I bet $30. He makes the call. We head to a turn, which is the deuce of hearts. Now the flush comes in. I'm out of position. Let's check it over and see what Chris does. We obviously don't know what he has in the moment, but Chris does have showdown value. He doesn't need to turn his hand into a bluff, so he checks behind. The river's the nine of diamonds, and at this point, I'm hoping that Chris has a hand that he can turn into a bluff. Not sure what kind of bluffs he can have unless he has total air or wants to turn a hand like a 7x hand into a bluff. So I check, planning to call a bet, but again, with Chris having some showdown value, the board getting really scary for him, and I could definitely retain some 10x in my range. He checks back, we flip over our hand, and we take it down. In this hand, the $10 straddle is on, and I'm in the hijack and look down at the beautiful 8-7 of diamonds. I raise it up to $25. I pick up three callers, so we go four ways to a flop of king, jack, 10, all clubs, so we of course completely nail the flop. Just kidding, we couldn't have whiffed harder. Facing three opponents, I'm already thinking about the next hand, as our hand is absolute dust. The flop checks all the way around, the turn is the nine of hearts, so now we do have the very bad end of the straight. We make a straight, however, because the king is out there, any queen makes a better straight than us. It checks around to Rory, he puts out a bet, and of course, facing three opponents, it's so likely one of my opponents has a queen x combination, so we put in the fold, Rory shows the queen, and we're gonna move on to the next one. In this hand, I play my biggest pot of the night against Brian. He had come up to me before the stream saying he's so excited, wants to play some hands, and he wants to make the vlog. When players tell me they want to make the vlog, there's a lot of meta and leveling that goes on. It's hard to know if they're just trying to get one through because they want to be fancy and get on the vlog or if they just have a hand. So in this one, you'll see that come into play. I have king queen offsuit under the gun too and I raise to $30. Brian's on the button and has pocket jacks. He raises it up to 100. It folds back around to me. Normally in a vacuum, I would probably just be folding this hand, being out of position. Suited, I would call, but the offsuit variety, I'd probably put in a four bet or fold. However, being on a live stream, I also feel pressure to play some hands. So in this one, I thought I'd flick in the call and see a flop. The flop comes pretty great for our hand. It's queen, jack, nine with two spades and we hold the king of spades in our hand. We're not gonna lead into the three better being out of position, so I check it over to him. He puts out a bet of $100. We have a gut shot, backdoor king high spade draw, and top pair king kicker, so I flick in the call. The turn is the five of clubs. I check it over to him yet again, and he bets $250. My opponent is showing significant strength. 
I do block some of his semi-bluffs containing the king of spades, for example, I do block ace-king. Some of his bluffs are gonna be hands like ace-three of hearts. I don't know at all how Brian plays, so it's really hard to gauge these spots. Against some players, I'm never folding here, and against a lot of players, I'm definitely just putting in the fold as it's very likely I'm behind. But I leaned more towards calling because I knew Brian wanted to make the vlog, and this would be a perfect spot to throw in the triple barrel bluff against me. So I flick in the call yet again, not loving it at all. We head to a river, which is the three of spades. I check it over to him and now this pot is pretty big. Brian rips all in for $642. At this point, Brian is completely polarized. He's saying, I have a top of range hand or nothing. So I went into the tank for quite a while. The only reason I was tanking is because I knew he wanted to be on the vlog. So I do beat a lot of his air. Like for example, if he had a hand that he was messing around with like ace four suited, ace deuce suited, something like that. I do have the king of spades in my hand, which does block some of his best spade draws he could have that make a flush on the river that would have semi bluffed on the flop in the turn. This was not an easy spot and I immediately regretted putting in the call pre-flop should have just folded, but now I've got myself into this pickle. Brian is repping aces with the ace of spades, a set of queens, nines, or jacks. I just don't think I can put in the call in this spot, really regretting my pre-flop choice of putting in a call, and I decide to let it go, and he shows pocket jacks for flopped middle set. Such a bummer, I flopped such a decent hand. It was the perfect flop, turn, and river for him to get a lot of value. Luckily, we don't put in the hero call on the river and save a bunch of chips, and we're gonna dust this one off and move on to the the next one. At this point in the stream, shots were going around, drinks were flying, and in this hand, I'm in the $10 straddle. It folds around to Chris and he makes it $50. Rory and Jamie call the $50 and now it's on me and the straddle and I look down at ace-king offsuit. Chris has been playing very loose, has the highest VPIP at the table, and I'm pretty sure he's not going to fold to a lot of my 3-bets. This is definitely a hand we want to take post-flop, heads up, and being out of position, we want to raise a little bit bigger. However, because of the table dynamics and things being a little bit crazy, I decided to go for a very annoying, obnoxious amount of $325. I probably should have made it more like $200. I went way too big in this spot, but I know Chris likes to see flops and maybe we can induce some mistakes. However, my raise size is astronomically large and they all fold, but we pick up a nice pot uncontested. In this hand, I have the $10 button straddle on, so action starts in the small blind. It folds all the way around to Brian under the gun, and he raises to $20, which is a very small raise size, considering that there's a $10 button straddle. I'm on the button and look down at jack five of clubs. I'm not gonna fold a suited jack in position, having the button, and for this price, so I make the call. Joey comes along as well, so we go three ways to a flop of queen five deuce with all diamonds. It checks around to me, and while it's likely my pair of fives is ahead of my opponents, this board is also a tough one for my opponents to continue on unless they have exactly a queen x or a big diamond like an ace king or jack of diamonds in their hand. So for all these reasons, we can deny equity and take control of this pot being on the button. So I bet and they fold and we take it down. In this hand, I'm gonna be completely honest with you, I don't remember what I had, and unfortunately the card reader couldn't read my cards in this one. But there was a $10 straddle and a limp under the gun, and I looked down at what I think was pocket tens, and I raised to $40. Chris makes the call, the other player calls as well, so we go three ways to a flop of queen seven six rainbow. They check it over to me, and my pocket tens does need protection against hands like eight nine, backdoor flush draws, and it is a queen high board, so we can bet a little bit bigger, and I bet $50. Chris calls with his straight draw, so we're gonna head to a turn card. The turn is the jack of hearts, bringing in a heart flush draw. Chris checks it over to me yet again. By checking in the spot, we can keep ranges wide, we have showdown value, pocket tens isn't a hand that we wanna turn into a bluff, plus if we bet here, we're really forcing Chris to narrow his range to just hands that have us beat, so I check back. The river is the nine of diamonds, it's a pretty bad card. Chris then leads into me for $125, which is just about half pot. It's a great bet size, it's a catch all sizing. He wants to target my jack x that might have checked on the turn. He's also targeting my queen x for this sizing. It's really hard for him to be bluffing in this spot. The nine is not a great card. It gives a lot of his holdings to pair, even hands like nine seven suited, queen nine, jack nine, and not to mention straights. So for all those reasons, we're gonna have to let our pocket tens go, or what I think was pocket tens, and move on to the next one.
in this hand, I play another pot against my nemesis, Joey. Like I said, we play a ton of tournaments against each other. We travel a lot of the same series, so we have a ton of history. There's a $10 under the gun straddle. It folds all the way around to me on the button, and I look down at 8-7 offsuit. I haven't played a hand in quite a while, but I have the button, and so this one feels like a premium. I raise it up to $30. Only Joey calls, so we are going to go heads up to a flop of king, nine, five, rainbow. So this is about as dry a board as you can see. He checks it over to me, and on a king high, pretty static board, we're gonna do what we would normally do with our entire range, which is down bet. So I put in a bet of $25. Joey pretty much snap calls, so again, you've heard me talk about this on the vlog. When people snap call, it means they really don't have a decision and are generally pretty weak. The turn is the deuce of clubs and he checks it over to me yet again. Now with our eight high and our gutter and our range advantage in this spot, because Joey would have three bet a lot of his premium hands, hands like ace king, etc. Eight seven offsuit on this board showing up here on the turn is our dustiest, most trash hand we could possibly have in this spot. So when we are at the stone bottom of our range with a hand that has some equity, we have to go for it and put in the bluff. So I make it $100, which is a polarizing size that is gonna put pressure on pretty much all of Joey's holdings. Obviously, Joey can't do anything with his ace eight offsuit here, so we end up taking the pot down with eight high. In this hand, there's an under the gun shuttle to $10 and Jamie is next to act and she puts in the limp to $10. Jamie is a very good aggressive player. So when she limps in this spot, I should have had alarm bells going on. However, I'm next to act and look down at queen 10 of clubs. So I raise it up to $40. Joey makes the call in the small blind and now it's back on Jamie. Jamie puts in the limp three bet to $160. Even though we are in position in the hand, facing a limp re-raise is usually pretty strong. So I think queen 10 suited is just a little bit too weak to put in the call here and face Jamie's aggression on future streets, so I elect to fold and we move on to the next hand. After that hand, I played a few insignificant pots with hands like King Jack Offsuit and Pocket Eights where I saw the flop and whiffed and had to fold in multi-way spots. In this hand, I avoid disaster. There's a $10 under the gun straddle and I'm next to act and look down at the beautiful King Queen of Hearts. I raise it up to $35. Joey calls in the hijack with queen deuce offsuit, and then Chris on the button wakes up with pocket kings. Chris had been electing to see a lot of flops, meaning he wasn't putting in a ton of three bets, but definitely loved to see flops. And especially being on the button, Chris is gonna be incentivized to flat a lot of hands. So Chris puts in the three bet to $150, which is a bit on the larger side considering he is in position and he has a super premium hand and he doesn't want hands like mine to fold. Normally I would peel, but for this price and being out of position against a very tough player who I know can put max pressure on on future streets, I elect to put in a little bit of a tight fold. However, my spidey senses were going off as I would expect Chris to flat a ton of hands, like I said. So when he puts in a three bet here, I actually think he's weighted towards stronger hands. So I put in the fold and save a little bit of money. In this hand, there's an under the gun straddle to $10 and Chris is next to act and makes it 35. Brian is in the cutoff and then puts in the three bet to 80 and then I'm in the small blind and look down at pocket jacks. Hindsight is always 2020. However, in this spot, in this configuration, given the fact that Chris is probably opening somewhat wide, although he is under the gun one, and Brian, who is quite unpredictable putting in the three bet in position, maybe this was a good spot to put in the four bet. I don't always love to four bet jacks as they play way better in three bet spots. So I like to call the 80 and Chris peels as well. So we are going three ways to a flop of four, five, seven with two hearts. I check, Chris then thinks for a little bit and decides to put in a bet of $100. I think overall, this board favors Chris way more than Brian and I. He's gonna have all the sets, fours, pocket fives, pocket sevens, and also all the hands exactly kind of like he has, seven six of hearts for a massive combo draw. So when he puts in the $100 bet, Brian then snap calls the 100, which I'm a little bit confused about what hands Brian would have that would wanna flatten this spot, but he puts in the call with the bad end of a straight draw and a backdoor nut flush draw. Now it's on me and I'm in a very tough spot. I don't have a heart in my hand. Our hand is extremely vulnerable. Even though it's pocket jacks, it is a one pair holding on a board that can get very, very bad for us. All options seem kind of terrible. Folding seems super nitty. Calling doesn't feel wonderful. And then raising, although would be a good option to isolate, I just don't know what hands I'm up against. So I can't just start piling in money, especially being out of position. So I like to call and see what develops on the turn. As in this multi-way spot, the turn could check through some of the time. So we head to a turn card, which is the ace of 
diamonds. So now it's going to be really easy for me to get away from my hand as this card is going to smash Brian's three bet range and his snap call on the flop is going to consist of a lot of hands like ace queen, ace king, possibly even ace jack suited, something like that. Obviously, I don't know he has exactly ace three of clubs, but this card really sucks. So on the turn, I check fold to Brian's bet. Chris and Brian battle it out and actually Chris goes for the check raise on the turn to 800 and gets Brian to fold. I absolutely love his play in this spot. He has a ton of equity and he can get so many of Brian's ace x hands to fold. So nicely played Chris. Both Brian and I end up folding the best hand and we're gonna move on to the next one. In this hand, Jamie has the under the gun $10 straddle on, and I look down at pocket eights next to act, I raise it up to $30. The small blind, Alex, who just joined the stream and is a bit of a wild card, he makes the call. Jamie's gonna peel in her straddle, so we are going three ways to a flop of king, three, four, with two diamonds. The small blind checks, Jamie checks, and now it's on me. I think betting here is nice, especially on a king high board. We have range advantage. Although there are some draws my opponents can have, we can bet and clean up some equity. By putting in a small bet here, we can make our opponents fold hands like ace nine for example queen ten hands that have equity against us and we don't really want them to peel and see a turn card so i don't need to bet too big in this spot i bet 35 dollars the small blind then puts in the check raise to 140. jamie flops an open ender so she makes the call and now i have a very easy fold in this hand, the $10 under the gun straddles on, Chris is next to act and raises it up with Queen Jack suited to $35. It folds around to me in the small blind, and after reviewing this hand in this spot, Ace Queen suited actually elects to flat more than it wants to three bet. But in this game, we're gonna raise it up and I make it $150, which we wanna go a bit bigger being out of position, and we want to polarize. Chris makes the call with his suited connecting Broadway hand, and we go heads up to a flop of 778 with two hearts. This is where I get to learn some things in this spot. So our ace queen of hearts wants to check, but our ace queen of clubs, as you can see, actually wants to put in a 75% pot bet in this spot. But I did elect to check, which I'm not a huge fan of. The turn is the five of diamonds. In hindsight, this card is pretty inconsequential and I would have liked to see myself start betting, but because we checked the flop, we're also gonna check the turn. My opponent checks yet again. The river is a six of diamonds and now this board has gotten terrible. I don't know what I quite got myself into on this hand, but we check once again. This is gonna be a great card for Chris to put maximum pressure on literally any hand I can have. He can now start to get my ace highs to fold. At the time I was thinking, even if he does put in a bet here, I was going to probably look him up depending on the price. Luckily for us, Chris puts out a very small bet of either 40 or $45. So for this price being as we only need to be winning here a very small percentage of the time given the pot odds. So I make the call and we take it down with our ace high in this very weirdly played hand. In this hand, Brian opens the hijack to $40 over a $10 under the gun straddle. I'm on the button and look down ace jack offsuit, and normally this hand likes to three bet a little bit more than it likes to flat. However, I like to flat this time, and we're gonna go heads up to a flop of queen, six, three, rainbow. Brian elects not to see bet, and I check back. The turn is the queen of diamonds, and now Brian checks yet again. Either he has some showdown value, or he has a complete give up. So now's my time to try and clean up some equity with a little bit of semi-bluffing, and I bet $50. Brian makes the call, so we head to a river, which is the Ace of Clubs. This is actually a great card, considering Brian can have some ace -X in his range that we beat, having our jack kicker. So he checks yet again, and I put out a bet of $75, and Brian pretty much snaps us off, and now our chip stack is finally headed in the right direction after a pretty brutal day. In this hand, the $10 under the gun straddles on, and Brian, next to act with 10-4 offsuit, makes it $20. Jamie then makes it $30, so now we're playing a little fun game of Limit Hold'em. However, I look down at Pocket Kings, not gonna put in a small raise here, I'm gonna go a standard size and make it $100. It folds around to Jamie, and she makes the call with her pocket jacks, and we go heads up to a flop of Ace, King, Seven, Rainbow, so we flop middle set on an Ace high board, pretty much the dream. Of course, now I'm hoping that Jamie has a very strong ace like ace queen possibly even ace seven suited so we can cooler her so she checks it over to me and on this board in this four bet pot I'm gonna go very small and make a bet of $50 Jamie's not gonna fold just yet so she makes the call the turn is the eight of hearts and she checks it over to me yet again I really don't want her to fold I'm hoping she has some ace x combination and so I go for another small sizing of $100 unfortunately for me I didn't know of course that she had pocket jacks so she does put in the fold but we win yet another pot and we are finally on the road to getting unstuck 
In the very last hand of the night, we get in a very interesting spot. There's a straddle under the gun to $10. There's a raise in early position. Jamie makes the call in the hijack, and now I'm in the cutoff and look down at ace, king, offsuit. Being the last hand of the live stream, people are gonna be a little bit more crazy and loose. I don't wanna raise too big, but I need to make it big enough to where we can try and thin the field, so I make it $160. Joey's in the small blind and looks down at nine, five, offsuit. He only started the hand with about $400. He makes the call. Everyone else folds, so we go heads up to a flop. The flop is deuce, deuce, six with two diamonds. Joey bets $5. SPR is extremely shallow. Joey has half a pot size bet left behind, and this is a board that Joey is going to miss a ton of the time. We have ace high, and we can deny equity to all of Joey's holdings, protecting our hand, so I rip all in, putting Joey to the test. Of course, with his 9-5 offsuit, he can't call, but we scoop a very nice pot to end the night. So after a four hour stream and all those hands we played and getting pretty unlucky in some spots, we find ourselves down only about $200 to end the night. Overall, even though poker didn't go exactly how I'd want it to be, I had an absolute blast at Best Bet Jacksonville in Jacksonville, Florida. Shout out to Best Bet Jacksonville for having a fantastic room and putting on a great live stream. A special shout out to the Run Good Poker series. They are top notch, and if you guys have never gone and played a Run Good Poker series tournament, you are missing out. They are the best at what they do, and you will absolutely love playing these poker tournaments. To find out when they're having a stop near you, check the link in my description. Even though poker was fun, the highlight of the trip for me was going to an escape room with all of my run good friends. We did an island theme escape room and we ended up solving and escaping the room with only seconds to spare. We had a fun celebration and had an absolute blast. Well, anyway, if you guys enjoyed the vlog, would you do me a huge favor and go all in and like, comment, and subscribe? It would mean the world to me. We're just getting started. It's only up from here. I'll see you guys next time.